This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. All our potheads. And I looked at it and I was like, I don't even need my hands. That's not a song I'll kick that motherfucker's knee out. I was like, <laughs> this I was, would have been so bad. Dude, this was, episode wouldn't have happened. Yeah, it was fun. And like, honestly, like if Jax wasn't in my back seat, I would just got out then. But I wanted to make sure, too. So, And I had to get back to work. I didn't want to get fired. But I got, I had an attitude the rest of work. Dude. I was mean to some rich motherfuckers oh rich of the day. Are we recording? Was, we can start recording. Okay, we'll just, uh, we we'll can, just start. We can just hop in at any time, start yeah. talking about some toys. So, the, yeah, the, uh, welcome to the Gore Club Podcast, everybody. I'm Steve Vessel. That's Metal Dave. I'm Derek. And this week we're talking about toys, collectibles, toys. Uh, horror, where it came from, how it started, and where we are now. Where we are now, where we are in life, our collections, because we're all nerds, we're oh, all God. toy collectors. Yes, we are. And now it's finally cool to collect toys, thanks to the wonderful world of Funko. I'm just kidding. I knew you were going to say it. It's true. <laughs> I hate Funko Pops so much, but they have made it okay to start collecting these things. And it's weird because we're going to talk a bit about the history of them. You're going all the way back to what, damn near the 60s? I got the 50s, 60s, oh, the 70s, 50s, 80s. 60s. I got it all, but I mean, I'm just, we're just going to talk about it. You know, gonna... Derek, you shouldn't make fun of something that brings people joy. Oh my God! Uh, Dave loves bobbleheads, which is like the extent of the ex- extension of a, of a beanie baby. I'm sorry, uh, Funko. Funko, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the few people that listen to this that actually know me, you you know that I'm constantly bashing Funko. It's became like I dislike it, but I understand why people enjoy it, and I don't give a shit if you collect it. It's fine, but I like to troll sometimes and just post like like they're the bane of my existence just for fun. Yeah. And people get like I can make a, a political post and no one will give a fuck, but I can be like Sala Funko Papa didn't like fuck them, and people will lose their minds yeah, on that's me. Great. They're like, you're sucking the joy out of things people like, and just I'm let like, people be happy, Derek. And I'm like, wait no. a minute. I've spent my entire life collecting toys. Since I've existed on this earth, I've been buying toys or my parents have bought toys or what the fuck ever. I've never stopped. And since about the after the age of 12, I've been made fun of for that. But now it's not okay for me to make fun of you for yeah. liking a toy? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? And that's the great thing about where we are with collecting uh, in general, just period. Or pop culture in general is what we should say, because it's never been cool to like comic booky things either. Now, like it's you know, everyone loves Marvel, Marvel and DC. Right. Everyone loves the toys. I mean, you ta- like that X Men movie? It looks so dumb. Look at his hair. Now look at him. now look at him. It's like yeah. it's like the car tra- uh, trying to like the chart the car people trying to change like the car style. Yeah. They have to do it bit by bit by bit. Exactly. And that's kind of how toys for nerds started. But you're right. It really hasn't changed. We're still fucking made fun of. We're, we're still, st- we're still like, uh, you have toys like, no, that's an action. Figure. Well, now we have, uh, now our collections. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me going to Target during my lunch break it's and coming back with a poseable. bunch of like gremlins, right? yeah. gremlins action figures. Like, oh no, your remember yours was like Invader Zim. Oh no, I had a bunch of those. Well, yeah, this is yeah, really yeah. It, it's evolved too, and we will go over a bit of the history because Steve and Dave here have the minds for that. Where I'm just like a drunken nerd that will talk <laughs> yeah. about all my collection and the things I've bought over the years. Uh, but it used to be pretty hard to find. You could go. We had toy stores, right? We had Toys R Us, uh, Children's Palace, Children's Palace, KB Toys, where you could go in and you could buy like kind of the adult oriented toys, but they didn't make a lot for adults. They weren't making a lot of horror figures or anything. But now there's literally like sections. If you go to like a Target or a Walmart, there's the toy section, which I buy shit from too. Or like and established then the ad- bookstores have that now. Yeah, and now they have the adult toy section, which is all the NECA stuff and the really nice, like there's Predators, Gremlins, or Texas Chainsaw, whatever. And we're going to get to that part of it, but for now we're going to travel back in time and Steve is going to take <laughs> us to what year? Where are we going to go, buddy? What decade are we going to Seriously, the, the 50s, a lot, of whole, a lot did not happen. I mean, we, just, we didn't have Nerds back then didn't really have it. It's like kind of like the clothes. If you looked at the clothes of the 50s, kids didn't have, teenagers didn't have clothes. They had adult clothes that they popped their collars. They didn't have and clothes. They didn't have, they didn't have oh, clothes baby. made for them, like directed towards them. Me. And it's the same way with toys. Like we had 10 toys, like these yeah. toys made out of yeah. 10 or lead yeah. or it was going to kill you. But it's fun to look at. It really wasn't like until like the Munsters hit, the Adams Family. Okay. Like they had something to direct towards children. And you had like Aurora Monster uh, models kind of came out later, but like, like 64, 63, 
the Munsters was kind of like the jaws of that era. Like, we yeah. can put this on a lunchbox. They're, they're okay. kind of funny. Yeah. We can direct this towards whomever. Like, it's okay for Johnny to have, you know, a vampire you know, on, on, on his lunchbox or, or his fucking yeah. doll, his mask. We I mean, we get to Don Post. There's so much to talk about. Because it was about. family television, right? So exactly. they kind of considered it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, um, like, I remember the comic books, that you have to think, like, comic books were getting censored for, like, horror aspects. You couldn't have, you couldn't have the words undead or vampire. People couldn't be brought back from the grave. But you have, play, like, Gold Key, who put out a comic book about the monsters, and they could have vampires because they didn't have to go by the comics code. Oh, Like, wow. all these little things, are they're trying to find ways to, to reach us, to reach the, our little nerd dicks. The comics code was <laughs> the, fi- the 50s, right? Comics code was the 50s, right? When yeah. all that shit dropped, yeah, and really just, got really just fucked killed, everybody, decimated. pretty much. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, Which would fuck toys at the same time, yeah. essentially. So you had like yeah. the Aurora model kits because you didn't have action figures. You had Aurora model kits, and then you had like Bandai, which I think was like yeah. Bandai Yay. And then explain they explain those the model kits to me. Are those the ones that you had to paint? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, see them sometimes. They're the old ass raggedy boxes, and you can put together Frankenstein, right, or whatever. Yeah. But and you, now they've but been bought out. And they're like it. polar lights, but it's the same, it's the same, 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 same company, yeah. same even yeah. the same molds. Uh, where you got Frankenstein's monster, the Hunchback, the Witch. You have all these things um, that came out, and they were directed towards people who could afford to give these for their kids for Christmas. So they didn't yeah. feel like, well, here's the here's here's a serial killer because we didn't yeah. even have that term back then. Like they they found a way to direct it towards children yeah. without uh, Christian and science people coming in like, what's going on? Why are you doing this? It's yeah. a hobby. Right, it's fucking fun. Probably, yeah, you're building something, you're putting it together. Yeah, you're, you're doing something. You're staying. You're doing something constructive. What, you're what building you, your model. What yeah. do you have before this? You have little army men and shit. I yeah, mean, you, literally, you, like, had you no don't have villains. anything fun. You had like yeah. Jaijos. Joes. But like, think about it. army yeah. men. They're only they're all one color. It's one side. Yeah. You have to make the villain. They didn't have monsters. They didn't have something yeah. to make the bad guys. Uh, and that happened again towards the towards the eighties, and we'll talk, we'll get to yeah. that. We will get to that. <laughs> uh, so you've got the, the Lewis Marks company. They made like a radio, radio controlled models. They still didn't have action figures, but you could you could radio control your little monster uh, model around. Like that was a big deal in the sixties. And then when Don Post hit, like he's the king of Halloween as far as I'm concerned when it comes to that making masks that kids can look in a magazine, for, uh, famous yeah. monsters magazine, and go magazine and be like, holy shit, mom! And like. Yeah. Well, if you save up those pennies for that little paper run and we'll yeah. figure this out, yeah. she didn't have a problem anymore because she saw the monsters like two years later. Okay, yeah. So it made it okay. Right. You know, it kind of made it normal to be into monsters because right. they were well, on that, TV. Exactly. And then the 70s hit and it's just, it's just, you get Jaws. Jaws changed it all for like toy companies. And like, oh, well, we'll, we'll be okay. We can put Jaws on a, on a pencil packet and then alien comes out like you have an alien action figure yeah, so you nod your head hit me baby. yeah that's the first horror action figure that i could find was the actual alien figure and if you were to see it i mean it looks right really good i mean even by like the 80s and 90s standards it was really good it's still amazing and when they made it you got to think like this is before this is before you know star wars or you know Toys like from movies weren't a huge thing by this point. Yeah, Jaws was the very first <clears throat> thing for when we hit theaters that they could direct horror stuff towards children. They they made a board game. Board game. And it wasn't really a board, board game. game. It was yeah. like a as, like a model of Jaws where if you put your finger to grab body parts out of its yeah. mouth, it would snap at you. Hmm. That was terrifying to me. But it was it, it was weird to I me. Was alive. It was it was. It was <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was alive. It was weird to me that they had this alien toy because like when they made it. Who was it marketed toward? Like, how did they how yeah, they how did they come to that conclusion? That's why that's such a big collector's item. Because after they made it, they're like, "Oh yeah, this is good. what are we gonna do with this?" Yeah, I mean, the kids that did own it would have tore it open. So you gotta keep in mind that these toys pre like '90s essentially weren't collectors' items yet. No, you so still, anybody you... that did buy them, even like your few like adults yeah. that are like, "Oh, I just like this. I'm gonna hide it somewhere, but I just like it." We're just ripping these fucking boxes open and banging these things up. Which is why, like, the old Star Wars toys have such value, and the new ones don't. Right. You always got to tell collectors that. Because, like, in the 70s, when those Star Wars toys came out, everyone just got them, got their mellow ways, whatever they got, and they fucking tore them open, and they banged them up and shit. I lit them so, on fire, rolled them down hills. Yeah. <laughs> so, up and fucking them in the yard. Yeah. 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 So, it's very hard to find, like, a nice on card, any of those. So, that's why they're worth money. Which calls, like, in the 90s, that Power of the Force shit came out, and everybody's like, I'm going to buy five of them, because I'm going to make so much money. Well, no, George, because everyone already knows now that, like, hey, keep them in a box. So, now there's a billion of these in the world, rather than the few of the ones from the 70s that are available. So, your shit's going to be $1.99 at Peddler's Mall or a thrift store. Right. 
You yeah. held shit still, we were a bunch of money. And during that time, right. you, you still only had Godzilla, like yeah. the big monster, like the big toy you could get everywhere was like Godzilla toys. <laughs> <laughs> I call this my, my Godzilla dick. <laughs> yeah, he's just like this blue blue dildo just shot out of Godzilla's mouth. I have all the I have, I'm a huge collector and I've been collecting my whole life. I mean, the first time yeah. I got a toy was a Rimco Dracula. You push the button on the back and he grabbed you so he could suck your blood. That was a big fucking deal. That's crazy. Yeah, you still have it? God, I wish I did. I but they know. made a whole series. They made a play set with a Frankenstein well, Rimco's, table. Rimco oh. had everybody's license. They did. They were the day. first one to actually. Then they did unlicensed before that, but then they got bought by what's his name. Azrak Hamway bought Rimco and just revolutionized everything at the time. They did AWA wrestling back then. So they did the wrestling they figures. They did the wrestling AWA, toys, yeah. Which I I later on would lead to like WWF getting into the game. And Rimco that, so. did the Conan. He did the Karate Kid. Remember the original Karate, Karate Kids, Kid? Yeah, oh, yeah, with the dojo well, they, place. They all look the same. They all had that like a. Uh, Action. Kind of small, move. like soft, weird body, and yeah. then like the big, almost Mego type of head. It was really weird. Yeah. Rimco put out the verse Kiss makeup kit. I've got that on there. Which we did kind of go over Mego. We kind of passed those. Yeah, well, that's what I'm, I'm working back towards that. Oh, yeah. Because Mego is in, in the mid 70s. I had like those, you know, I had like Spider Man and all that, and they, they would fight Godzilla, but yeah. that's the only monster I had. The only villains I had for Mego were still yeah. like the Joker. It wasn't a horror thing. It wasn't a yeah, horror thing no. until much later. Uh, the seventies, like the, uh, the the biggest thing that helped with the seventies and collecting was like Disney put in Halloween records. Yeah, that was a big right. fucking deal. Yeah. Burger Chef and Jeff putting out little records with their ha- with their quote unquote Happy Meals, not the Happy Meal, but those little things. Having getting a poster, but there still wasn't a, a, a horror nerd thing for you know, us to go go to the store and pick it up. You just didn't have that. Yeah, it was pretty non-existent. Yeah. Even even in the '80s, really, it's still not really going too hard there. I mean, and it's mostly few, like universal ripoffs. Yeah, stuff. universal shit. There's a few little things here and there, but it, I mean, this shit does for horror figures. It doesn't really pick up until the '90s. Yeah. Now, I will say the '80s boom for me as a pro wrestling fan. I mean, you had those Remco figures. You had WWF come in and do the LJNs, which people call the dog toys because they look like giant dog <laughs> chew toys. I love those things. Uh, you had those evolved to where Hasbro got the license and made the ones that people are mostly fond of. Most of people my age started with the Hasbros, which were the little, little small scale dudes, but they all had like little motions and shit that they could do. Yeah. So you did have like this toy boom of the '80s. It just wasn't for horror. It was for literally everything else. Whether it was sci-fi, <laughs> pro wrestling, fucking cartoons, because you got Masters of the Universe, yeah. Transformers, and that's just yeah, it. Joe. You had to be as but, a horror nerd. You had to go to these other yeah. things. You had to go to He Man. You had to go to GI Joe to get the villains, to get the bad guy, because they didn't make monsters. They just yeah. didn't. D and D. Oh, I'm gonna D and D toys. I remember when Clash of the Titans hit. Hit. I was yeah. like, holy shit! There's a fucking mo- dragon those monster Clash of the the Kraken. Day. You know, yeah, yeah. Calabos. Cool. That shit was amazing. Everybody wanted the little the uh, the the sword guy from in- the Raiders of the Lost Ark toys. You wanted the villains. You wanted Cobra Commander. Yeah. You didn't have that for monster toys. Gremlins hit, and then that changed. It's like it was like, it was like Jaws from the seventies, and you have Gremlins, and they're like, we can market this. Oh, and yeah, it's going to be okay. Gremlins was totally marketed toward kids. I mean, they changed they, the movie. They, so they, could... they changed the movie. They changed marketing. They changed toys. Then all of a sudden you had Bachlins, Mad Balls. You had all these things, so yeah. many things, but they had to be small and kind of cute, but they were still monsters. How did Garbage Pail Kids get by? Mar- Garbage Pail Kids came out in the later. I don't know how that actually started, but what a brilliant fucking idea. No, I love it. I just, it's such a weird thing. that that's, I remember seeing those on the shelves at like a Toys R Us. Extremely like graphic that. fucking and toys. it's so graphic. And, and, and you know, you know, top, illustrations. You know? yeah. yeah, and you're just like, what one the that fuck? I, one that I remember from the 80s was uh, from a show called Inhumanoids. Inhumanoids, oh, yeah. yeah. That. Those big monsters that you'd get. They yeah. had like the T-Rex corpse thing that would open its yep. chest. And I remember it because I had, I had that one. I have the one that's orange. I still have it. And you open up its chest. I don't have any of the body parts inside. Yeah. It looks like an orange and red like demon with like the little bitty arms. Yeah. And that was like, yeah, that, was like the, that was like the first like horror toy that I can remember getting. Yeah. Other than My Pet Monster. Well, there was this one yeah, company. My Pet Monster. I, I wish I could have looked it up. But I didn't Cute. think about it until cool. now. But they had the incredible hulk where you can inflate him and he would fall out he would bust out of these rocks well they had a monster version of the same kind of toy where you like deflated him smashed him down and then you would just pump him up and he would burst for but he was like a big monster gator like thing yeah and i cannot remember the name of that but i god i wish i would look that up for this episode but it's, it's one of those little things you're just <clears> grasping at straws for anything that you can get how long would that even hold up though so a toy like that seems like it would break after like two weeks after you have it out you the just box. keep pumping it up just to see how how much it could take until it explodes and then you're done yeah, exactly, man. I, I didn't. I completely forgot about that toy until I saw Creep Show as an adult. Looking back at that, you know, at, at, uh, at Joel Hill's room, yeah. it's in the corner. 
you got Rodan, yeah. and you've got that green fucking inflatable monster. I'm like, son of a bitch, I got that. <laughs> that motherfucker is. probably still has it, too. Right. Oh, God. Fuck yeah, he does. Or he just rebuys it every few years. He's got the money. <laughs> it was probably Stephen King's. He's like, well, that's pretty cool, Joe. I'm glad you, you've outgrown this. I'm going to put this in the basement. Joe's like, no, it's <laughs> mine. I write comics now, and you give me my toys. So, yeah, and then uh, in the 80s, you still didn't have action figures. You just didn't. You had Universal Monsters. They just yeah. kept pulling that shit out. You had, then you got, like, Monster Cereal. You had anything you could possibly get for a horror nerd until Freddy hit. Yeah, Freddy, Freddy was just... And we're, I'm not even talking about Max FX yet. I'm yeah. talking about Freddy. When you could get a glove, yeah. and then you can get a mask, and you can get the deluxe mask, and then all of a sudden, there were these, these small mask companies, and that's the only thing you really had. You didn't have action figures yet. Studio not, execs sold dollar signs with Freddy, though. Man. Fucking A, they did. And let's market this extent, pedophile yeah, monster to the let's kids. Let's market the shit out. I mean, because by what what Dream Warriors is when we really give him that personality of like, oh, he's got these one liners and he's like, he's fun loving, but he's a piece of shit. So yeah. let's, let's and that's really the mask that you could buy. I had, yeah. I had like the the cheaper version, and my neighbor who was had more money had the deluxe with the the nice hat. And I'm like. Fuck it, so you rich, <laughs> you rich son of a bitch. You had the plastic hat. Yeah, I did, and like yeah. the mask stopped at my chin, but his was like the full thing went down oh, his collarbone. And I was like, I'm gonna steal that. Yeah, I want that. You're not gonna know it. <laughs> I've seen like I, I've seen that like Dahl said. Keep in mind, like I was born in '86. A lot of this shit, yeah, a little bit, you know, below what I had. I mean, my my introduction to toys was essentially uh, actually caring about toys was going to yard sales and buying Masters of the Universe figures, and that's why I'm so high on this because I used to go you go to yard sale. And, you know, some kid had them in, what, like, 82 or what the fuck ever, and they're grown up now, and you didn't keep toys back then. And I could find some, like, in good condition. Skeletor like web a, stores bro, and Stinkor. I'll get somebody a dollar, Beast and they would give me, like, man. yeah, a dollar. Everybody wanted me spend. Get three action figures for, like, a buck. You fuck know? yeah. I had a ton of those motherfuckers. They didn't know what they had. They had no idea, and I was able to just, like, you know, and neither did I, because I just took them home and banged them up or fucking twist them so much to fucking rubber bands and shit in the middle yeah. of them popping out. All right, same with wrestling figures. Did the same thing. Get battered up. Those dog chew toy LJNs I mentioned before. I mean, I would just take those fuckers and just like, boom, boom. We're going in the bathtub. We're going to smell like rubber together and fucking splash, splash, boom. Just fuck them all up, yeah. man. But I never, like, remember seeing, like, horror toys ever. Like, and I was in... I know people were listening to this like, bullshit, you weren't into this. Like, that's about three or four when I start watching yeah. all this And the ones they remember are still not contemporary action figures. They're still like yeah. universal monsters. They're still yeah. safer. Yeah, It's exactly. a black and white movie monster. It's okay to uh, buy that for Jimmy. When did those Swamp Thing toys come out? That was the 90s. 90s. Those are 90s. That okay, was the 90s. You still hadn't, you still, we still hadn't gone to like Rude Ralph where you pull the eyeball yeah. out and he made these weird noises like, you know, it was like a pull toy doll. Nice. got gross. Then, like, yeah, then you got, then, then you got like the screaming model kids. Yeah. Uh, before that you had My Pet Monster, but then again, still yep. cute. Still a monster. Still, still awesome. Yeah. I, st- I want one now. I'm buying a shirt here recently, but it's still directed towards little kids, so it's cute. Yeah. Nothing for us. Nothing for a forty Nothing year old no. fucking horror nerd. You, no. could, <laughs> you could, uh, you could dress up your My Buddy doll as Chucky. Yeah, you could. you could. And I had a mud buddy doll. I had a my buddy doll. Uh, that, my sister had the uh, kid sister. I got in kid trouble sister. for catching kid my sister. <laughs> I caught mine on fire and got grounded for a really long time. Fuck you, man, dude. I saw. Okay, so for one, I was like fucking four, maybe five, and I got a my buddy doll, and he would sleep next to me. Because, you know, I'm a fucking child. Like, I'm not 34. And he's your buddy. Yeah, he's your buddy. buddy. I mean, he had those those commercials would come on during, like, Saturday morning cartoons. They're like, my buddy, my buddy. Uh, Just like Child's Play. But going back to it, I watched horror movies at an early age. And we watched fucking Chucky. And I'll never forget this in my whole fucking life. I go to bed that night, and my buddy doll is in my room next to me. Not even thinking that this movie scared me. You know, you don't. You watch it, and you're like, okay, that was cool. That was spooky. Go to bed, my buddy doll's in there, and I'm like. I'm much more traumatized at I this point yeah. than Derek ever was, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I, can't, I was like, I can't do I'm this. I'm thinking poltergeist. Yeah, I'm like, I can't, I can't hang with you, my buddy. You got to get the fuck out of here. So I got up, and it's, I don't know what time it was. It was nighttime, and my parents were already in bed, too. Uh, I get up, I take him, and I throw him in my fucking closet, and I shut the door. Go lay back down. This is total poltergeist. Go ahead. And it, and it doesn't. Oh sh- no! It doesn't shut all the way. So <laughs> oh like, no! So it instantly <laughs> I knew goes, it. Like it shuts and it goes. Eh, and I'm like, I mean, obviously there was probably like a shirt or something that made it open. But in my head, that motherfucker just opened it. He's gonna come so, kill you. So well, like, yeah. I, I it's I like Monster Squad with the mummies in there. I fucking scream, Look at that run into the living room, hopefully to get my mom. She's not there. All the lights in the house are off. I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? She had one of those long candle lighters that you use to light the candle. I, as it flicked the thing open, because I'm a fucking kid, 
to get the flame going, stick my arm in the closet, just hoping I'm burning him, and I leave my arm in there. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. I caught my shirts. <laughs> so my shirts are fucking on fire. Yeah. I see fire. I take off running, and I'm like, I don't want to wake my mom up, though. Maybe the fire will just go out. So I stand there, and now the fire's worse. So then I have to go wake my mom up. And I go, Mom! She's like, what? I go, Chucky set the closet on fire. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like, what? I go, she's like, Chucky, that's a movie. Go to bed. I go, no, Chucky set the closet's on fire. Chucky set the, and why is I'm saying that? The smoke alarm starts going off. And she jumps up. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> Chucky did it, I swear. Oh, my and God. Like, this is like the movie, Chucky. <laughs> like, nobody believes and you by the way, Chucky. I'm holding the candle lighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yelling at her. Oh, that's great. Just a stupid fucking kid, right? So she goes in there and like opens my closet and like there's flames. It's not crazy. In my head, it's like way more dramatic, like hellfire and brimstone. But it's just like flaming shirts. So then she runs. In That's the all. Kitchen. She runs in the kitchen, gets a mop bucket, uses like the power handle to fill it up, and just throws water into my closet, and then runs back and does it again, like a really shitty fireman. But it does go out. <laughs> and to this day, I'm like, I'm like, it's like what we do in the shadows, trying yeah. to put out fucking yeah. Peter. And in my brain, I'm like, did we not have a fire extinguisher? Or like, maybe she didn't want to ruin my clothes. I don't know. They're already on fucking fire. But uh, yeah, and she looks and she pulls the My Buddy doll out and she's like, he's fine. And then tosses him to me. And I'm like, <laughs> she doesn't know yeah. the actual story. Yeah. And like, it, she's like, why did you do that? Why are you starting fires? Are you a pyromaniac? Just yeah. yelling, like, all, like, using all these like trigger words on me and shit, just trying to like make me seem like the fucking devil. And I just like had to admit, like, I was like, I, I had a nightmare and I thought he attacked me and I thought I would catch him on fire. And then like I caught him on fire, but I guess I didn't catch him on fire because my Bugle Boy shirts are on fire. Yeah, you're beautiful. You're like, boy. I'm real, you're tree but, I, but I'm really sorry. Can we get rid of him? And then she's like, no, he costs blah, blah, blah. And like yells the price up. And I'm like, and then I look back on that and I'm like, so like if I think someone's a killer doll, as long as it costs like money, I can't get rid of it. Nope. Like it's like, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> she ends up giving it to like some friend at work, like way afterwards. And I always and that wonder, person died. Yeah, yeah that, he died. that'd be hilarious. But I, I always wonder to this day if like when she gave her that, you know, my buddy doll, if she told her the story of why she had to give her the my buddy doll, and she was like, "Well, my son caught his closet on fire." This is the story of Annabelle mixed with child's play. Yeah, this was fun. So, so I get it. He wasn't a horror toy, but man, he he was a lot like Chucky. And I don't, I can't even remember what he looked like. I just remember like he did wear the overalls. Oh, and he had shit. a little. Red and hat. I remember the commercials, yep. and I don't know if Chucky was based off him. He, or was, not, he was but inspired by it. It was very similar. They said Cabbage and, uh, Patch Buddy. It's why he's actually in the remake. His name is Buddy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, so no hard toys for me at, back then. Yeah, now I had my wrestlers. Jesus and that Christ, man! You just created your own movie. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got I've got nothing on that, man. Nobody does. Yeah, I don't. Like, I have a weird. I do weird things. Well, let's jump. The uh, I didn't the, do it at thirty four though. Yeah, yeah, we finally get. The Freddy that we want. Okay, when when did that? Okay, educate me. This is like eighty nine or eighty eight. There's this Freddy doll that you have on the table. That's the one that fucked it all up. Okay, so let's go back. Is the Freddy that comes in like that big blue box? Oh, yeah. Is that the one you're about to refer to? Yeah. The okay, who made that guy? <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> it. That is Matchbox. Matchbox. Matchbox made that Freddy. Matchbox. Okay. Well, okay, it's a weird. It looks like a story. dress of Freddy. There's a right? couple of different stories, and I think I've put them both together. It's, it's yeah. like. The person who helped them create these, like a lineup of these uh, Max Effects dolls. Okay. And the what they did is Matchbox just jumped the gun and said, "Well, fuck it, if we're doing like it was going to be Alien. Like it was, there's actually pictures, of Alien. There was Dracula, but they couldn't call him Dracula. Frankenstein monster and something. Else. I think like a, a mummy and a, like a wolf for that like set that. that we're talking. Yes. About. Okay. But it was it was like stylized. It's like this guy named Max. Max FS, he, FX. He's a special effects artist. So what he does to get into character or to, to to foil the bad guys is he dresses up. So it's supposed to be like. It's a dress-up doll. Yeah, yeah, that's how I see him box. Well, the same company was like, well, fuck, this is going to be awesome. We'll take Freddy. Freddy's blowing up. We'll make him a goddamn, like, Pee Wee Herman pull string doll. 89. For children. Oh, it was 89. Yeah. And that, and the, they, the, apparently the, the, the article I read, they were like, they just fucking killed us because yeah. nobody's going to buy this for the child. Or they're going to buy it for the child, and then they're going to look it up. Like, yeah. this is a fucking raping 
child terrifying right it ruined it and that was the only thing they got released was the max effects freddy okay. they didn't release any of the awesome other lineup they had planned so they had a whole lineup for those like those dress up kits right, right. they come in the giant box yeah. and it has like all because there's a uh, at the antique toy mall in louisville there's somebody that actually has that inbox still wow for, uh, like it's like a hundred bucks or so yeah but it's really cool looking every time i see him I'm like fuck it's a shitty looking figure by all means it looks like shit but, in 89, but when you go back amazing. to that and see yeah. it i think I'm like oh, fuck i would lose my mind over that this pull string gut doll gimmick, is it the same company that did Pee Wee and Ernest? I don't know that one. Maybe Dave can look that up while we're bullshitting. Because it's but, got a uh, similar build to this. Yeah, it reminds oh, it does. me a lot it, of this. It, it's very much. Here, I think the reason it has a tag on it, Dave, if you want to. It's Matchbox. It, oh, there we go. Of course, I just said that. Um, but, yeah, this is the uh, this is the Freddy doll. I've had this one for I don't know how many decades. And I it was one that my mom bought me that I just trashed. Oh, just, I was yeah. an idiot. Yeah, so you don't I, think this about is not it. the original one I had. The rest <clears> of my toys I have are pretty much original. Yeah, Matchbox. They, they, yeah, made, they made the okay. Pee-wee. Yeah, well, they probably oh, they made the, And I know, I know the company that made the Pee-wee made the Ernest. So it's they the, make the Urkel doll, too. And they make the Urkel, too. Yeah. Probably, wow, so. nice. I wonder if they did like the... the the Crypt Keeper pull dolls. I used to have a bunch of those. Yeah, there's a ton. Of, well, that, I don't that know. That was what the, the first was a horror doll that we were going to have, and Max FX was going to be the first horror action figure. Oh shit! And they just got wiped off the fucking planet. It's like, oh, because oh, of this fuck. fucker. Because the Matchbox jumped the gun with this thing. Like, it's not. It's just not a glow worm. You're gonna, you yeah. can't give this to your children. Well, how does that impact? It's a them, monster though? that kills you in your sleep. So yeah. here, have a, take a nap. So parents were mad, I guess. Is that what happened? Yeah, ch- uh, church groups grew up. You know, grew up. They, 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 <laughs> they, 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 they I wish they grew up. They get a hold of everything. And they, they just. They, they raised up they and, and called a big stink. It's like yeah. having your horror show a little too early in the in the PM. Yeah. Like, oh, we gotta stop this. It's the, at seven PM, so it should be at nine PM. The same church the groups same that thing. tell us like they hate cancel culture are the ones that like have been canceling shit for all eternity that we're yeah, into. Shit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like that that leads into the nineties. It's so weird that that would even get canceled when I'm like. So by the time I'm like six or seven. Things are gross, man. Every toy I have is like creepy crawlers, Doctor Dreadful, mm-hmm. slime became slime, a big thing. All this shit's very slime and everything. Uh, all real monsters, teenage is on, mutant ninja turtle yeah, monster yeah. versions. All monster real monsters version, yeah. is on Nickelodeon. Street yeah. sharks are things like every Mummies Alive, uh, Mutant League. Yeah. like comics everything is monster getting, oriented. Comics, comics are getting darker. Images come. Image is about to hit. That's so what we're I was starting to towards. You're getting a darker. A kid like like an yeah. undercurrent for children, even though it's really not for children. Mm-hmm. Is it? Are is X Men directed at small children, or is it directed towards teenagers or preteens? It's not really children, children. Yeah. So that's when you get, you're getting more serious lines. People are dying in comics. There's there's actually horror comics coming back. Yeah. Because the comic codes is not really it's not relevant. It's still it's still intact. They still want you to follow it, but nobody does. Hell, you're, you're, you're loose killing guidelines. people, right? You're getting all kinds of like demons in comics. I used to collect the X Men Inferno series, the crossed over, like the biggest crossover yeah. comic series of all time at, at that time, and it's just demons killing fucking superheroes. So you get all this thing going on, and then Screaming comes out with their fucking models towards the end of the ninety or t- towards the end of the eighties, and it just blows up. Then you get the T two to- toys. They're all of a sudden they're okay. You can those have, two, yeah, I had yeah. those. Those Terminator Two toys were right. fucking awesome. Aliens, aliens the alien story. Yeah, yeah aliens. you got a lot of those. And I've got one run over here. Yeah, the aliens. Aliens yeah. came out, and you got all yeah. kinds of different types of aliens. We're still re-releasing those now. Yeah, well, this is an original one. Yeah, it shoots. It shoots like a little alien off his back, which yeah. I lost. But this is the original one. Yeah, they're doing those. I know they look like shit. I know, but they they are re-releasing all of them, like all yeah. and all their bright colors and shit. All the different ones that came out from them. These are sculpted then, beautifully. Yeah, I remember the humans looking stupid as fuck. Yeah, the humans. So nobody bought the humans, and they've redone the humans too. Yeah, they've even done. Uh, they even have the alien queen plates that with the slime and everything. It's they fucking have, amazing. They have Easter eggs coming out this year, full of little aliens. Yeah, like the creatures and oh, shit. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. right. In time for Easter. Easter set, so that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. How uh, far we've come, you know. Playmates that uh, you can actually walk into, like you said, a children's palace or KB toy store, yeah. and you can buy. You can start to see uh, more horror things, but it's not until McFarland comes, man. Yeah, McFarland I'll let you comes. You guys in. go on that a little it's, bit. It's when want. the floodgates open. Right, the floodgates open, and for me, and once again, I'm a bit younger, so like. My horror collecting, I was buying like shit like you have this Godzilla figure on the table. I was buying like the Godzilla, the Swamp Things, uh, anything I could get my hands on. I had a Predator figure too. I don't even remember. I love those. It was the Alien like, versus Predator action Predator figures. I had Predator sets. Mm-hmm. I had Alien sets. Uh, I had Mutant League. I was really big on Mutant League, That's which isn't our movie, but th- those were fucking creepy little fucking dudes, yeah. man. I was super into all like the really gross like figures and shit. And then like one day I'm at a flea market and I see a Candyman figure. And I'm like, what the fuck? Candyman. Yeah. I was like, there's no way this is real. And like, it was 10 bucks. 
is Movie Maniacs. I think that's Series 1, actually. I think Candyman is I think series so. One. I could be wrong. And, cause it, it had to be. I've got a shit ton. I've got, got, got Leatherface right here on the I table. I was pretty fucking young. And I don't know. What year did Movie Maniacs launch, Dave? I'm getting uh, that. Uh, but I, I bought the fucking Candyman, and I thought it was. He is not. He must be Series 2. because you've got That's Series 1? Yeah, you've got Freddy uh, yeah. Krueger. You've got Sill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you've got uh, the, uh, what the fuck? Is it from Species 2? And then you have Jason Voorhees. Yeah, so that Jason I That's bought with him. the original one. And I lost my mind because I bought that Candyman and I bought that Jason Voorhees and it cost me all of like $20. Not even that, maybe. I think they were 10 bucks each, maybe even cheaper than that. And I thought it was the craziest fucking thing in the world that I had figures of these. And I remember like my mom was like, what are you even going to do with those? And I'm like, I'm going to stand them up on a shelf. And yeah. she thought that was weird. Just like, because I'm already getting to that age where, like, you know, back then it's like if once you pass like 12, you're supposed to not even collect toys anymore. Meanwhile, I got like five wrestling rings and full of figures, and they're like, I'm not playing with them really. I'm not in the bathtub, like, making them fight my dick anymore. You know, because you got to get an extra figure. And sometimes your, <laughs> your dick's got to be, like, whatever bald wrestler you don't have the figure of. I don't do but, uh, that game, but it sounds great. <laughs> it's, sometimes it happens, but, yeah. like, you got to let your dick win or it's going to be in pain. Uh, oh. Yeah, man. So I would buy, like, all these fucking toys, and I would still just keep them on shelves. And I didn't know that was a thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I never knew in the future that people were just going to decorate their houses like this or that there was other people doing this with their Star Wars collections and shit. But when you look at these movie maniacs figures, they're blatantly like made for that, right? You got yeah. the movie posters like wrapped in the bone shit. Did you see the find the year by any chance? Uh, it says 1998. 98. Nice. So yeah, I would have been 12 for series one and probably 13. Yeah. Before for this, we still two. had like Toxic Crusader. Yeah, yeah which, and which, the swamp which is, thing. Yeah, which is weird. The to they made Toxic yeah. Adventure into a into toy. A well, we can totally go back on this, but yeah, the movie Maniacs just blew the lid off of everything. And I think series one actually still had like I thought they had like Norman Bates, The Crow. There's so many yeah. now that yeah, I kind of get them all two, confused. Series two, but series one and series two and series three were sort yeah. of close together. Yeah, as yeah. my memory, as well, an old man, I remember that, that kind of gets all mixed together. McFarlane was just churning out so much shit. Yeah, you get a baseball player and you get Freddy. Yeah, I mean he was doing <laughs> hockey. You got think we had baseball, hockey. He had ar he just made army people, just people from the military. Yeah. Well, the uh, spawn figures show that he all could spawn market figures. his monsters towards us. He knew, he knew how like the market this shit out of it. And this was like it's funny because I'm fucking like I said 34 now, so I'm you know 20 something years into collecting really, and it hasn't changed. I still collect horror and pro wrestling, but it's bigger than it's ever been. But it's funny looking at it back then and going into a Toys R Us, and I never I don't know if McFarland those toys were at Toys R Us. They were, yeah. They I never saw them there because probably all the adults got them. But uh, I bought, yeah. <laughs> and it, which is kind of what people deal with today. Uh, but I I went, always went to my you know buy my wrestling figures. But I also never heard of like church people getting those pulled. They um, did because of the, there was a blood versions, and then they stopped. They get the blood versions pulled. All the blood versions that I have yeah. are that was a big deal. Okay, they're like, what the fuck? You can you can have the head yeah. in the bucket, but it's got to have less blood, and he can't it, have any blood on his body. And it was a variant too, so that was yeah. that was yeah. the first issue. Yeah, I didn't, of that. Well, yeah. To me, what I was going to say, though, is what's odd about that is that, like, as a wrestling figure collector, Al Snow had a figure in, like, 1998 come out. And this whole thing was, what does everybody want? And everybody would yell, head. And he had, like, <laughs> he had, like, a, because he came out with a dummy head. So when they released his figure, it was Al Snow in the package and the dummy head. And uh, parents, like, church people made them pull it, saying it's, like, women abuse. And he's he has a decapitated woman's head with him. Oh, me. was it a woman? Okay. Yeah, but it's a mannequin head. It's a mannequin head. It's, it's a mannequin. Real head that says head that he talks to they just see a his severed gimmick. head in a fucking but then bubble that, pack, you know but then there's that right <laughs> so Derek's how's that leather face figure on the table how's yeah. that leather face figure like okay it was so weird that this like wrestler Al Snow gets attacked for like what was his first toy it was probably a very exciting moment for him yeah. in his career I think, and I think the thing is that Al Snow is on mainstream television every yeah. week these were still not you, they didn't make commercials for these they didn't make TV spots. Yeah. There weren't like a, th a thing before a movie. Hey, don't forget, kids, check out Leatherface and his severed head body, you know, yeah. bucket thing. That That's maybe just a little bit different is that they can see that on Sunday. I figured they would sell right, it right more before though. fucking after their church program. I think the fact that you could just turn on DW and see, though, that Al Snow is just this crazy person that talks to a mannequin head. You'd go, oh, okay, that's yeah. what that is, obviously. I don't know. What, I'm just trying to make sense out of that. What child would look sense. at that figure and right. go, Oh, this is definitely like abusive. Well, that can yeah. be compared to like a Godzilla figure. Godzilla yeah. kills thousands of people with a footstep. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. It's yeah, weird. it's really weird. You know, yeah, uh, radioactive breath, uh, breath all over New York. 
Or, or you know, or Tokyo. But those McFarlane, that, that was a game changer. Though McFarlane doing horror figures changed everything. Cause Absolutely. It, and it brought in more, once again, more toy collectors. Cause still, up even up until five years ago. But this this helped it be less nerdy, right? Yeah. Now horror fans like these death metal motherfuckers are like, I got toys now. I got right. fucking Leatherface. It, got it wasn't just a little nerd, yeah. fucking horror nerd. It was you. You liked a certain. You were like you were like the Rob Zombie stereotype. Yeah. You're not right. just a, the Star Wars collector that, you know, no. then if you find something else you like, it can go with your Star Wars toys. Right, and we, yeah, like yeah, we, we're skipping all over that because sci-fi is totally, it's way, way more acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's Star Trek figures in the 60s, and I know there's Star Trek, Star, Star Wars figures in the 80s we haven't talked about and all those things. I was just, you know, like, the point of that is you, you still picked up the villains. Yeah. You still wanted fucking the Klingon over Spock. And honestly, there's so much Star Wars that we would have to do like a fucking month of podcasts to cover <laughs> right. like all yeah, the Star Wars collecting. That. And I don't want to do that. I will say this. Star Wars was like my gateway into a lot of this shit. I think it, I think most people will have the same story, whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars. I mean, I did. I had Masters of the Universe and I had like Star Wars toys, and most of those were like hand me down Star Wars toys and shit because it's the 80s and that shit's kind of we're 10 years past it or whatever the fuck. And then, you know, Power of the Force came out, which I mentioned, and everyone bought the fuck out of those. So I was yeah. buying the shit out of those. And that was like, those were actually the first ones because I played with my wrestling figures since I was like 12. Like, I didn't start setting those up. I was the same way with Star- my villain G.I. Joe's, yeah. Dreadnoughts and Globulus and all that shit. I was 14. So, Star Wars were the first ones that I really just, I think I just took, and I was like, I don't want to get rid of you. So right. you can go on these shelves. I was still asking for them for Christmas. Yeah, we still. Yeah. And my dad was like, this is the last time yeah. I'm buying you toys. <laughs> the last. Well, we, It wasn't. I used, to, I used to do the same <laughs> thing when I was a kid. I would get the. I used to love Ninja Turtles, so I would get Ninja Turtles. So what I would do is I'd take them off the card. I would be yeah. carefully take them off the card, and I'd save the card, and I'd get a little plastic bag, like a little baggie, and I'd put the turtles in there. You were so more so, advanced than I was. So at that so age. so when yeah. I wanted to play with them, I would take them out, and I would have all the throwing stars and all that, and I still have all of the cards and all of the yeah. throwing stars and all that shit, and it's still in a box. It's still, I didn't do that until I was probably. Hmm. I just didn't want to lose I never, that. I, didn't, I still don't do it. I didn't want to lose that stuff. Yeah. But for no, me, it's... when it comes to when it comes to the movie Maniacs, I remember specifically walking into a store. I, did, I think it was I think it was a Toy R Us or one of those one of those toy stores. I don't remember what store, but seeing the 18 inch Ash, Talking Ash. Yeah. It might have been at even I've got at one like, in the other room. Like at Sun Sunco or something like that. Yeah, I, I think that was like a uh, not Spirit Halloween because they weren't even around. But like, what's the, what's a Spencer's, Spencer's gift sort of thing? Which yeah. also had those dolls. Remember, they, they, I think you. I well, got the face over there. Yeah, it's just, we can't even show them because it's way over there. But yeah. there was like there was like a Michael Myers and a Leatherface. These like you know eighteen inch dolls that they put out. And they were they were actual dolls. And you they weren't their, action figures. Yeah, they were dolls, and you push their stomachs, and they can play like themes from the right. movie or whatever. And then there's the other ones like you're talking about with the 18, 18 inch action figure movie maniacs, yeah. which was fucking amazing. You can get pumpkin head twenty inches tall. Yeah, I mean, I've still got, I've still got Ash, and I've still, we've still got uh, the uh, Leatherface. Yeah, and Suncoast did have a lot of that. And I will say That's another right, Suncoast oh, thing that baby. we, yeah. we kind of skipped over is like uh, animated shows. Because Sun, I remember going to Suncoast and seeing Beavis and Butthead figures, and that blowing my mind. And I bought those. And then when everybody, like, if you're fucking 30s or 40s, remembers like the South Park boom that happened in the late 90s. Where it was everywhere, but if you walked into a Sun Coast, there was like just a fucking table of nothing but South Park, and it was DVDs and all the action figures. Everyone That's got awesome. either, they had stuffed animals for South Park, like a stuffed Cartman, you yeah. had your Cartman hats, and then they had little action figures of all of them, or you could buy like these weird four packs or five packs of all of them. And all that was insane to me. Going like in my head as like a young kid, you know, preteen, seeing these things like this can't be made for little kids. Like who is this made for? I guess me. So I'm going to fucking buy it. So yeah. I got like all my South Park toys and all this weird shit. And nothing made sense. I'm so unorganized. So it's like there's pro wrestling figures everywhere in my room on these shelves. And then there's just like South Park and Star Wars. And then like these horror figures start taking up spaces. Yeah, and to the point where they were like getting bled into like Barbie. You could get Adam's Family and X-File Barbie dolls. Barbie right? dolls and yeah. shit. Yeah. So it was hitting mainstream. Uh, and before that, like we t- we touched on the Toxic Crusaders, like yeah. literally Toxic. I think I've got Toxic one, Yeah, I've got two up on the shelf over yeah. there. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's it's weird to watch this, and then you go back and you know where the roots come from. But as a child or a mom who's buying this for a little kid, it's like, oh, it's an ugly little guy. Here, here you go. Yeah, here That's you go. That's cute. He's a well, superhero. Yeah. He, uh huh. Sure he is. <laughs> it's just weird to think that it did like bleed, and I think it's more. 
nowadays, especially, blew up. I think it's only for collectors. I don't, I don't think many kids play with toys in general. I mean, my son's raised by a toy nerd. And he's going to the toy store with me. Though. Yeah, he has no choice, Derek. Yeah, he's never. <laughs> My kids are the same way. Yeah, I mean, he has like kind of interest as far as like occasional, like if there's like a pro wrestler he really likes, so buy one. I mean, is he's going on twelve? He's got about twenty wrestling figures, so yeah. maybe two that he sees a year that he's just like, okay, I need to have that guy. Other than that, he doesn't give a shit. He's never cared about having Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers or any of that like shit that would be like a gateway drug, because everything is just technology oriented you know you have a tablet when you're fucking born yeah, <laughs> you know you do. it's you, getting so bad youtube's man. entertaining you when you're a baby you had ne- he's had netflix since he's uh, been alive he's had a, a laptop forever so none of these like action figures and things like that have ever meant anything so now like when you walk in the toy stores or the toy section of like a walmart you rarely see kids you just see old dudes staring and at And we're shit. all looking like we're at a porn store. <laughs> yeah. You're like, are you looking for the, you better not uh, looking for the same fucking, you know, blowjob movie I'm looking for, Dave, because it's mine. And I do feel bad. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. we should bring up the chase toys, the ones yeah. that people, the, the companies, that became a thing in the 90s, is becoming, is finding that one figure that's going to be, quote unquote, <laughs> the, the chase The variant figure. or the chases, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of what they're, that's what I remember them being called, is the, co- the, the one that you will go to every fucking Target, and, Walmart, because- yeah, that's the thing is like you're going to find this before that it was kind of like Happy Meals but me I would do it with my mom to go everywhere to find the right fucking horror uh, uh, McDonald's figure that I, I oh wanted. yeah would... yeah my mom started me on that shit so when I got old enough I was like we're chasing this motherfucking down be here we're chasing these beanie babies right. you can have a hundred leather faces but I got to find Pumpkinhead right yeah. and, like and Ash Ash was one of those that, uh, and you are correct Ash <clears throat> Ash was like the first one that I remember because I would go to several stores and see if they had it and they were like no there was one per box yeah. and when the store we get yeah, a box that's it the one per box one bullshit per box. Yeah. God and, you, damn it. and you had to know somebody because the fucking people would there would get it and I think I got it at a Hot Topic or oh, some shit. shit like just went in and was like hey hold it for me I will fucking pay you and so that's how I got that one. That's probably that's you know that's one of the ones I've had forever. Was that a movie Maniacs? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the they did, the, they did like a two pack yeah. with him, didn't they? Yes, I oh, had the yeah, two pack as well. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. did that. That was a big fucking deal because they, the lightness was him was different from trying to like say get a leather face or a ghost face. Like trying to get Bruce Campbell's lightness was just like insane. Was, like look at how fucking amazing this looks. Well, it looks really I had good the even compared to the other room. Ones. Yeah, and they did an they did an exclusive Fye. Two pack, which Those was the mother, which was a, which was a, the pit witch, Derek yep. used to work at the, 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 the yep. pit witch and, and Ash. So and then they had a they had a evil Ash and Ash together, even yeah. though they had them separate. But you just had to get them together, and yeah. that's that's what started it for me, man. Now I'm going down this fucking rabbit well, we're, hole. Well, we're, I mean, the, the thing about like '90s is, is it starts it. It, it yeah. really starts the boom, especially for even like indie makers, like people at like conventions are really starting to help even pushed us even further we, we have so much to talk about when it comes to 2000s obviously we're kind of like holding mm. back but the 90 late 90s gave us soda toys you know what was another ones like uh there were so many com- uh, course companies that we talked about you know soda NECA, sideshow you know now playing all that stuff is getting ready to hit in a couple more years so right now we're still in the 90s storms like brewing and we're just yeah. like oh my gosh well, yeah, NECA, NECA really under. hits in 2000 yes yeah. it does and and but not in, in a way where you can still walk into a store the only time that I could find a NECA toy was going to a horror convention. And it might be some guy who probably fucking got him off a, a truck yeah. in New York. He's yeah. like, hey, I got some NECA toys. Yeah, that's the weirdest <laughs> thing with NECA is like really, they, so they're, they're pretty early 2000s. They come on the scene, but finding them in retail was next to impossible. Like you never see them out anywhere. And now like you go into a Target and like I was seeing earlier, there's a NECA section. Yeah. They have a NECA vendor. Trust me, I know because I'm a psychopath and I know what time the vendors are going to be there. I, <laughs> I take pictures of the section for NECA now so I can get free gift cards from them. Like, I'm a weirdo, man. Uh, but they have like a full NECA section that they stock usually once a week to once every two weeks. And nerds are just fighting over this shit. I mean, NECA has the license to so much shit now. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the big thing, which is funny because we're all like, fucking adults battling for these turtles and they're fucking impossible to find they and NECA speaking of this chase stuff they're not chase but they do a lot of retail exclusives and one of the things they do is walmart's the exclusive for the movies movie turtles and the animated turtles are target exclusives 
So it's like a constant battle to get to these stores right when they're put on the shelves. Yeah. And if you don't get there, like, within 20 minutes of them being put on the shelves, you're not fucking getting them. Because somebody simple. else will buy them and throw them on eBay. Somebody else yeah. will buy them. And, I mean, there's been so many times where, like, I'm in some toy auction, like, you know, sites and shit like that. There's so many times where you'll people will post, anybody need these? And they'll post a picture of their Target shopping cart with, like, 20 of the two-packs yeah. in it. So they're dropping, like, a grand in the store. So they can go flip it in some auction place or whatever. Yeah. And everybody's like, hey, fuck face. Why don't you just leave them on the shelves for other people? But they're like, nah, I, wanna go. I gotta sell this April O'Neil for all the money in the world. And But with that being said, one of the things of collecting is that weird adrenaline rush you get when you find that fucking thing on shelves. Because people do this to me all the time. They're like, why don't you just buy it online? I'm like, well, it's not as fun. I will. It's if, never been as fun. If I can't find it, I'll, I'll buy go, it. I'll wait years. But I'm going to search. I'm that guy. I'll go to yeah. every convention. If I couldn't find it in the store when it's yep. supposed to come out, I will go to every convention and be like, hey, uh, what's up? Because yeah. like, you know, I know half the vendors. So I'm like, you got this? Oh, yeah. I'll text you about that. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's... I'm that with vinyl. Any kind of collecting. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, to go back a little bit when it comes to these action figures, they are the reason that, that, that model kits died. Because yeah. in the 90s, like I said, you had Screaming, you had Horizon, you started, you, they can like Aurora sold off to Polar Lights, and then you could get like the old Universal models. And then we always talk about Wonderfest, which is like a big toy modeling convention. It's still it's the insane. same thing. They All those companies died so then that you would have people who made them at home. And that's how you got the garage kit. Yep. And that still goes on today. But it's, it's the action figures killed. The modeling, because I had friends who yeah. collected models, and they were like, why would I spend 50 bucks on this model when I can get an 18-inch Chucky or an 18-inch Ash that articulates and looks, I don't have to paint. Yeah, it. I don't have to paint out. It talks to, to you. Work. It talks yeah. to me. And I remember thinking back then, I was like, oh, that's fucked. Let's go to yeah. Wonderfest. And yeah. then I would see more toys. Yeah. More and more toys. I will say this, though. When I go to Wonderfest and I see those models... I do get jealous of how good some of those are. Though. They've gotten because so some of amazing. them are way better than the action figures yeah. I have. For and they're sure. all licensed for the most part. They're yeah. like they're like hockey mask guy. Yeah, you know, pumpkin killer, and it's fucking pumpkin head. But they can't yeah. call it that because they'll get sued. But I can have a likeness of hey. of, of Eddie Quist. Hey, fuck you. Hey, if, ne- if Neca can dude. just Neca can do Ghostface, <laughs> right, so, right, so right. Whatever. And that's another thing is licensing all these studios is now that they've realized the same with Blu-rays and DVDs is they, oh, there's there's a crowd for these people who want who are hungry for special features. Yeah. There's, a, there's a crowd for people who are hungry for toys. Yeah. And, and we're fucking 50. Yeah, exactly. And they have money. Yeah. They'll spend $400 on a goddamn Chucky that you can't get in the store. Or yeah. Special variants. No, we were, right. Yeah. And those were all indie companies, and they all explode over the 2000s, man. They go from the convention circuit, get their money, and they open up They can open up web stores now because the internet's insane. Yeah. And it's, it changes I mean, everything. I, it's crazy how many of these companies have blown up. And like the one that like blows my mind, I think the most, is Sideshow Collectibles. Just to think that like they found a market. For people that are willing to spend five hundred to two thousand dollars per figure, just starting out, man. Yeah, just, just starting out, and it's fucking insane, dude. And yeah. it's, they, these things are cool. Most of them. Some of them, I'm like, oh, dude, it's really? The same it's horror nerd we talk about going to like a, going to a convention and spending a thousand dollars to meet Gene Simmons. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. How? Yeah. That's the person who can buy the coffin. Yeah. That, for Gene Simmons, but they they buy that. You know, we have a friend, our friend Damien. He spends thousands of dollars a year. On, 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 on like our, the most perfect fucking action side shows, you've never stuff seen. like yeah. Yeah. yeah, even more caliber. I can't remember the name of the company. And you Big can't bad really... toys. Yes, they're insane. And speaking of toys, like Kiss. I mean, Kiss. And like, they do they have a layaway. The toy, they fit in the toy shit like perfectly because Kiss had their own action figure line too. I think McFarlane did the Kiss action. They did the Psycho well. Circus. Yeah, and then they had their giant dolls. Remember those? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a bunch of Shredder dolls with Kiss paint. Psycho Circus <laughs> was one of my first concerts, by the way. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, Corey is a huge Kiss fan. Aren't so, you? Yeah. But Our they producer. Had, they had those giant dolls that are taller than this fucking table, which uh, Elite Toys, if anybody's listened to it, Elite Toys in Louisville does have that full set. Somebody sold him the collection recently. So oh, he's crap. got a ton of Kiss figures and those giant fucking Kiss dolls. And they were, if I was a Kiss fan, I'd probably pony up and put the money on them. I don't know where the fuck I'd put them. They're fucking huge. But those guys, like, they push the figures, and they have, like, all the variants with that Psycho Circus shit and the shit where they look completely fucking different. Yeah. And, like, I think that's pretty cool, though. I wish other bands would do that. I know, that, I know, like Metallica's had like one set. Uh, there's like a. I remember the Metallica a McFarlane said toys. Figures. Well, the Mc, yeah. McFarlane did the, the Ozzy Osbourne yeah, and that's right. stuff like that. Alice Cooper. Yeah, I did the Alice Cooper run? Uh, but most of them only get like one or two. There's a there's a company out now called like Knuckleheads, I think, or Knuckle something. But they do like a lot of band shit. Yeah. But they're more like statues. 
but they're, they're only like a hundred bucks, and you can get like that's way reasonable. Members of Motley Crue, yeah, but they're like figure size, so they're I think they're like six or seven inches, but they all look really fucking cool. But they've done like Alice Cooper, Ghost, Motley Crue, Pantera, fucking Janis Joplin, like all these like. Across the board, Jimi Hendrix, and yeah. they all look fucking awesome. I think knuckle bones or knuckleheads, I'm not sure, but yeah, they look fucking awesome. Oh, another thing that's that's really come a long way is the packaging, because it used to yes. be on the card, yeah, just on you know, card and just in, in a bubble, or in, in, in the uh, the the first big expensive, you know, figure that I bought was the Lord of the Rings Balrog, oh, yeah. the the big bad toys. Mine, mine was Ash. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well. And that one, that one was just in a just just a plain old cardboard box. There was nothing to it. Just you yeah, open no, it. He's gonna tell the story. No, it's okay, Steve. It's it's fine. He, he broke the wings. Yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> this is like a hundred and fifty dollars fucking action figure. Oh, when it came out, I mean, it's probably worth way I, more I, than I, that I, now. That's okay. But anyways, so the packaging has gotten so I much. Like I just skipped over my our drama, our sadness. It's not. It's fine, Steve. We've we've moved past. It, it. weighed a hundred pounds. It was heavy. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyways, go ahead. The so, Lord of the Rings figures are badass. Oh, well, yeah, but the packaging in in has gotten so much better. Where you go from you know plastic bubbles on on a card to now you have these display cases. Like yeah, you maybe open you have it the up. Halloween three one right in yeah. front of Dave right now. And I hate them. Yeah, you hate them because Derek. There's two types of people that collect these. There's people that keep them in the box pristine. You keep them on your shelf. You Absolutely. display them. Or goosey, there's people, goosey baby. Or there's people that just rip the Let fucking breathe. package open yeah. and breathe. put them in a glass case. But that works for the for the the person who created because then you have that guy who will buy the extra. Yeah, or the, the person. I shouldn't so say guy. My thing with that is though, with those, I'll buy two and rip one open with the like the clamshell like case style that NECA does. Uh, if I'm an in-the-box collector, how the fuck do I display it? I'm displaying the box. Like, yeah. when these are setting out, you're displaying the box unless you pull it out. But at least with, like, the Halloween 3 set that I just pointed at, <laughs> you can slide it out and you have the window. So you can display that. If you're looking but on YouTube. With the NECA ones, though, <laughs> I, go, I go to so many friends' houses that they buy, like, the all the... The amazing. They man. buy all the Ultimates, and they just line them up on a bookshelf. And I'm like... What the fuck? Like you can't yeah. even see the figure. It's just set, it's like a VHS, man. And like I I buy these figures so I can display them. I line mine up and open. I just play it, with open, my... open it and just put another one in front of it. Yeah, <laughs> I just have too much shit to be able to do that. I did I with my Friday the 13th because I do have a Friday the 13th like wall in my house because I'm a psychopath. Uh, I do keep them in the box because it looks cool like that with my display. But the rest, I'm like fuck that. Cut these motherfuckers open. Uh, Another company that we haven't talked about, though, that's real the best in packaging, Super 7. If you ever order anything yeah. from Super 7, you got to open three boxes to get to the fucking figure. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, we they, haven't gotten to that now that we're in the 2000s. There's just yeah. so much to talk about because it's, it's this is the boom. This is the golden age it, of collecting. It's the boom, and it's like the licensing wars. Like, everybody yeah. is like, like, we're talking about Turtles. So NECA has the rights to the animated Turtles and the movie Turtles. Meanwhile, Super 7 has the rights to remake the Playmates Turtles, which I know a lot of people think Playmates Turtles were based off the animated series, but they fucking weren't. No, 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 like no, 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 yeah. I had those original ones. Yeah, so they're remaking those, but they make, like, when you get a Super 7 figure, you get this beautiful, like, brown box that's going to have, like, the TV show logo and the name of the figure you're getting. When you open it up, you're going to slide it out. It's going to have another box protecting it that's going to be, like, really cartoony or whatever it is for that show. And then you slide it out. They're going to have the figure, like, beautifully packaged with the window that you can – That they're the only ones I don't open, really. Like, I just – I think they're fucking beautiful. That's deluxe package. packaging. They, it's insane. And they you play a deluxe price, and people bitch about it because Super 7 is always about 50 bucks for a figure. But you are paying for quality. And you got to keep in mind that when you buy a Super 7 toy – it's not like a NECA Chucky figure where they're going to make 700,000 of them. Most of these are like 10,000 to 20,000 per production. Yeah. So they do have to mark it up a little bit because they got to make back their production costs on making these things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've come such Collecting a long way. Collecting is that. so crazy now. Well, everything, there's a toy for everything. And there Literally. is, but this is something I wanted to touch upon. I yeah. knew I was going to talk about it. Yeah. And I'm glad you let in kind of into it is that now that we're in. The, you know, it's 2021, and there's this thing where every time I'm so ready for the Toy Fair, you know, uh, uh, expo yeah. thing, I can see all the releases, and it's like top 40 horror, and it's yeah. like, oh great, it's another Freddy. 
It's another yes. leather. An- I, I, I'll tell you what, Aliens has gotten the worst. It's like another alien. Predator. Fear. Predator is bad. Uh, and they're I all. Don't, they're I didn't know so there was that many predators until. They're so fucking beautiful, but like, I don't. Dave, you got something on that? Yeah, just, you, I don't, you just keep don't need them. No, I, I totally agree that some. Some of some of the companies are trying to branch out and to get newer franchises. Well, it's but, like top forty. Dig deep, motherfucker. <laughs> we did. But just get Led Zeppelin's got more songs. Yeah, we got. We just got a hatchet. <laughs> we just got a hatchet figure. We found got two. We got two Victor Crowleys, which is a, awesome. A, that th- does happen. Remember when Reanimator was a big thing? Like we're never going to get. A we Herbert got that Reanimator. A Mock Toys did uh, Leslie Vernon, yeah. which was yeah. really cool. And uh, they're but getting a lot of that's crowd a terrifier. It is a uh, terrifier toy. Yeah. is coming out soon. And that's all that pronounced today. Oh, really? Or the other? Oh, yeah, day. you're Not right. Today. No, you are correct. My you're, night. Right. you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's ruined my night. Um, but I, I get it. He looks. I've cool. noticed that too, and I guess it has to do. She's. It shows if anybody's interested. If they crowdfund something or Indiegogo, yeah. all that shit, like a board game. The board game's going to cost you a hundred fucking dollars for like the thing board game. Yeah. You're not going to get that again. A big trouble, little China, whatever. That's just board games, but it's the same thing with action figures. Yeah, and it costs a lot more to make an action figure than it does it a board game, it. too. I was I learned I've dug deep because this whole wrestling figure collecting thing with Super Seven making the New Japan ones, and a lot of people bitching about the price and the them not producing a lot of them. And the dude was talking about like how they have to they order like they the molds are carved out of, like this giant block right that weighs like three hundred fucking pounds, what? and it's like it costs like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this giant block that they have to move around, and then they cut the mold like out of that, and then each future mold's like based off this weird thing that they had to build for the initial one. I'm explaining it in a very idiotic way because I'm a dummy, but uh, <laughs> and I can link to it if anybody wants to. Okay, like, yeah, we might put the link in the I comments. I can put the link to the interview on there. Yeah. It's an interview about the Super 7 action figures, but if you really want to know what goes into making an action figure, it's on the major pod. Uh, look for one of their most recent interviews. You'll see it. It's like interview with Super 7s, yeah. whatever. Look it up because it will give you like some insight on what goes into toy making. Yeah. And it'll blow your fucking mind. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I wanted to start uh, putting in the Gore Club podcast when, on YouTube. I'm going to start putting links to the things that we were talking about yeah. in the in the comment section or in our description so people can actually go look and see what you're talking about. Yeah, especially if you just want... And it, it's an education on, like... It, it's it's all wrestling figures they're talking about, but Super 7 does that. Like I said, they, they have the rights to, like, Turtles. They're doing the Conan figures right now, which you would lose your fucking mind if you saw the packaging oh, of these toys. I, the man. last ones were great. The, the older... Conan's ones that came out like 10 years ago. Yeah. Fucking amazing. These are stupid. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, they had the rights to Masters of the Universe. I'm like, going through a pandemic. I don't have any they, money. Yeah, the, God damn it. Thundercats. They had Thundercats. They had the Thundercats. They Thundercats. Yeah. Well, and that's and, another thing. Let's talk about the uh, going back and looking at old yeah. franchises or cartoons yeah. or movies and then redoing the same thing. Like you just you brought up Teen Ninja yeah. Turtles. You brought up Thundercats, yeah. Conan. These are things that have already been made, and they're are, are they going to remake it just the way it was? Pretty or, much. I mean, okay. a lot of yeah. a lot of the Thundercats look look well, pretty I mean, much the same, except the packaging yeah. is so much better. That's the thing. The like, yeah, well, and going back to what I was saying about turtles, though, yeah, is that Super Seven? They are doing the Playmates turtles. That's what they're they're just remaking them, better quality, yeah, slightly better looking. But you're rebuying that Playmates turtle again. Yeah, the that's kind of weird. The same way and everything. I don't know how I feel about but that. But the packaging is pretty. The figure's nicer. But that's what they're remaking. I that's just saw it. this Conan figure. I just I didn't know about. Did this. you shit your pants? It's, it's I think I smell really something. fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's fine if it's if it's a new sculpt. I, I that's yeah. something I've always thought. It is a new it's sculpt, of own. course. Yeah, that's the inside. Like I'm not insides. I'm like I don't know. Do I want to rebuy? Let's say Movie Maniacs comes out and they redo the exact same fucking figure. No, right wouldn't buy that. No, it's kind of but it's. It's kind of the same thing, though. A little bit, but with it's that, like a repackaged one eighty gram fucking album. I'm like, man, I got the original. It's I'm a good. different kind of nostalgia because now we are the market that they're selling this stuff yeah. to, and they're 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 banking on our nostalgia. Like, or you had this you when as you were a completist. A kid. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you had this as a kid, and a lot of people, you know, don't have a collection of. Thundercats toys or that's He-Mans. great. It's brilliant. It's like the He-Man problem. Like you have all the yeah. villains, and they never remade fucking He-Man. Well, and also finding so the mint. They're kind of, yeah. Okay. Good point. That's the thing. Like, okay, if I want to find a mint, you know, Masters of the Universe figure, depending on who I'm looking for, let's just, let's just do Scareglow. <laughs> How much is Scareglow going to cost me? $1,000, a couple hundred dollars. Or I can go to Walmart, which those are those ones that are running in Walmart right now that Dave always mentions that I'm talking about, are exact remakes. Yeah. And those are, uh, you know, that's Hasbro. What's the incentive for you besides packaging? Well, the packaging, the... Uh, 
I never got to open a He-Man figure. Good point. I okay, got, that's I, the, I need to I know this before, because I, I got, just I got them all secondhand, so yeah. I never got like a fresh let let that motherfucker yeah. breathe. Like, I don't want to be an elitist, like, well, yeah. you should have got it when I, you know, it's impossible, well, I can't, man. Because I being, I'm not 45. That's so what I, I meant. Like, I'm trying not to be <laughs> that way, but yeah. I understand people who look at that and go, well, why are you remaking my fucking childhood exactly the way that I had it for somebody else? Now, does that take away the does it take away does it take away the value of what I've already got? Does it? I don't no, know. It's like it a remake or no, a reimagining. No, it doesn't. It no, causes... I agree. I'm just posting the question out here for so we can talk about it. Now, there's more confusion now as far as like, you know, you got to... I'm a deep diver, and I can get really nerdy about this shit, but I'm not going Do to. Do it, No, because we'll need years to go into it. But there is a lot of shit, like, it keeps its value, but you have to know the difference between all of it. There's a lot of people that are jumping into this shit, and they're jumping into sports cards right now and things like that because it's, like, the thing to do, especially during a pandemic. People are bored. People are spending money. But they don't know what they're buying, so they're getting ripped off. Yeah, they're trying to sell it, too. There's a thing happening with, like, what they don't understand with these figures, especially, like, He-Man, Turtles, uh, WWF. A lot of selling points of these toys that makes them worth more money is the accessories because that's the first thing you lose. But what's happening now is there's these companies that are making replicas of the accessories and they're repackaging and reselling them saying that's the accessory that came with it. Oh, now this $20 figure is worth $200. And people are buying it not knowing how to look at it and go, oh, that's not what it came with. This is the fake one. So that's happening a lot. So that is the problem with like reproductions and things that are coming out like these new He-Man figures that are exactly like the originals is you do get a lot of stupid people out there. And I, I shouldn't say stupid, uneducated on the market that are going to buy these things thinking they're getting an original of something and they're buying something that came out yesterday or something that's just a reproduction right. that some dude made. It's the like, full moon fucking vi- Yeah. <laughs> it's all like all those VHS is Charles Band. Yeah. Look, yeah. I just found them. I got the VHS. And, but I, I think... But people are stupid enough to buy it. Yeah. No, they are. I mean, that, that's, that's happened like, for years. They're not dumb. They're uneducated. Uneducated. They, they're not, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used and I can't words. fault that's them for I mean. that yeah. because it's like you know, getting a phone call and be like, oh, your warranty needs to be re- rewarded. Give me all your information. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. I know, but shit. not everybody else. It's not, yeah, old, you know, your 80-year-old granny that hears that call doesn't know shit and wants to, yeah. Yeah. Trust, just wants to trust people <laughs> and you're fucked. But sometimes you can take uh, uh, something that's already been made and then repackage it completely different, but still be nostalgic. Like the what was it, the retro, the reaction the, figures. Those are yeah, fucking great yeah. when they first came out. I think there's so many now that I've lost track and I'm, I don't have as much well, interest. But I bought the Chet like two weeks yeah. ago. I had to. I it was, was interesting. It was totally different. I was on board when they were at nine ninety nine, but when they are hitting nineteen ninety nine for yes, some they of these, that's too much. I can't do twenty bucks for a reaction figure because yeah. those. For those that haven't seen them, they're the ones that are like the small G.I. Joes. Yeah, like these old uh, they're Universal the, They're the 3.25 inch. Not a lot of detail. I'm shoving it at the YouTube camera. But their card, <laughs> they're ones like the card on them looks really good. And they're made to kind of keep on card for the most part. And that was a selling point for me on those. I would hang them up, keep them in the box and shit. Because they made like weird ones, Back to the Future. There's a Joe Bob Briggs one, which oh, is yeah. awesome. I have the Joe yep. Bob. Um, there's two just, of those. Yeah, there's there a might few. Be a Darcy. They just did a. They just did a whole new line that are beautiful. Like, there's the Karate bunch. Kid set that yeah. are like they just did Turtles. They did tur- the TMNT, which well, they, did, they did like a Hitchcock figure. Yeah, little ones like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Those are cool. They're doing like the Mego thing of just picking up all the licenses. They did the Invisible Man for April Fools. Which no, is, no shit. It's just invisible. Just that's nothing. fucking great. That's like going back to Kiss when they released uh, yeah. Kiss air guitar strings. And uh, by the way, you didn't know, but uh, we are recording this on April Fool's, but uh, you won't hear it till later. <laughs> you won't hear it till later. I wish I did a whole April's Fool Days podcast about that movie. That fucking fun. <laughs> we'll do it uh, in May. We'll do it in May just to throw people <laughs> off. That's, that's our big April's Fool's joke is that we're covering April Fool's in fucking May. Um, yeah, I like the reaction toys, but I don't like the pricing of it. And for me, it just there's no nostalgia attached. So I just I bought a few. It went to nineteen ninety nine, and now what's happening with these licenses is like NECA is making like better versions of all of them. Like I couldn't get Back to the Future figures before, so I bought those yeah. reaction ones. But now NECA's got a whole Back to the Future line that looks brilliant. It's like the best line that they've done so far to me because Doc actually looks like Christopher Lloyd. It's one of the few times they've gotten the fates down pat. Yeah, I follow them on Instagram. And I've seen all bad. their updates because yeah. they're smart. They're actually taking like photorealistic like picture like I mean, yeah. you know, obviously photorealistic but like it looks like a scene from the movie yeah and I have to look at it and go that's a fucking toy that's yeah. so brilliant how to market it like that no it's insane and I never thought you know when we talk about toys and going to toy stores in the 80s and going to toy stores in the 90s and early 2000s I never in my life would think that I could walk into a Target and on a shelf I would see Victor Crowley 
Annabelle, Biff from Back to the Future, Marty from Back to the Future, The Golden Girls, yeah. a Halloween three pack, a Halloween three three pack. Next to Ultimate Michael Myers, next yeah. to Ultimate Jason, next to predator. Ultimate Freddy. Yeah, I see this 7, actually at a bookstore. Predators, I go to a bookstore like once a week. 8,000 Gremlins. And there's a hun- there's an entire row of toys for like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Next to the board and, game for The Shining. And it is like, like a, Collecting is insane now. It's great. It's great. It's become a little bit of a cash grab where I hope they reel things in a little bit with the Turtles, uh, with Predator, because there's... I'm not, I, I guess I'm not the most diehard Predator fan. I thought I liked them, but I guess I didn't know that there were 7,000 different Predators, so I'm an asshole. Uh, same no, with Aliens. Oh, man. I like the skinned ones, and, and I was like, oh, that's that's all I need. And Gremlins. <laughs> like, they keep getting me with Gremlins, but, dude, it's the same figure in every pack. It's just wearing a different hat. It is. It's literally the same figure. It's brilliant. But they're getting us because they're not even remaking any features on it. They're yeah. just like, here he is of the hat. I got the Olympics one the other day. Uh, like, yeah, I had the Olympics ago. one. Oh. Talking about big ones, like Trick or Treat putting out the replicas of yeah. the ones used in the film. Like That's that's where I'm at. Oh, I'm like, I, of, I want the Gremlin. I want the Gremlin. I want Stripe. Yeah, and I know you're talking I about the studio. Chuck. but yeah, Trick or Treat Studios, yeah. Sam from Trick or Treat got a figure. Oh, they that's right, yeah. Multiple. And like that's crazy to me because that's like a one-off movie that came out, what, ten over 10 years ago now. Yeah. You would never have seen that ever in the 90s, the 80s, whatever. It had to be a big franchise to get anything. Yeah. And now Sam's got one, like this little fucker. That's yeah, come a long way. Spirit has blown that movie up. Yeah, last year. People have no idea what the fuck the movie is. They're like, what is this? This is really cool. Well, then they started. That's where it, I, I, last year I was almost like an elitist prick, and I was trying not to be, but it's just one of those things. Like Suddenly you see this thing you love and you've been telling people about forever, and everyone's talking about it, and you're like, I told you that shit was cool a decade ago, and none of you gave a fuck. I think we all say the same but, thing on this podcast. But you <laughs> once walk, a week, you walk into Spirit fucking Halloween and see it once, and you're like, "Oh, I'll go watch that movie." Fuck Derek. <sighs> and then you get the nerve to go to me and go, "Hey, have you seen this?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Actually, I did that to Derek one time." He's like, "I fucking told you that. <laughs> I fucking told you about that." <laughs> oh, I can't remember what it was. I try yeah. so hard not to be that guy with like bands, comics, or anything. But sometimes it's so hard because we have been the nerds for so long and everything we've loved has been made fun of for so long. And now suddenly some of it's cool and it's so hard. Like yeah. when Netflix, We haven't changed. Yeah, yeah. Just like for me, when I'm watching Netflix and people are just like, I fucking love this show. And I'm like, motherfucker, dude, I was reading that. Like I was reading goddamn Umbrella Academy. <laughs> That's what it was. It was The Boys. Yeah. And then The De- Boys. Derek told me about The de- Boys. The and boys. I was like, I made a post about it. He's like, motherfucker, <laughs> I yeah. told you about that. <laughs> yeah. In comic book form, you bastard. Yeah. Like, I was like, I, the okay. The shit that I've been like just <laughs> pushing on people like a drug peddler forever. And now people are into it. But like, there's that little upset part of me. It's like, why aren't you giving me credit? Like, motherfucker, I at least understand. be like, thanks, Derek, for telling me that I should read Preacher or Umbrella. You know what? You told me to read The Boys, and I read about read five. Read The Fucking Boys. I read, I read five issues of it, and I stopped. But it was pretty good. Hey, so I he just, started, then he remembered he couldn't read, but he liked the pictures, yeah. and that's great. But, yeah, dude, it's just it's crazy how popular all this is. And it, streaming does have a big part of that, because Netflix is really like, if people see it, it's easier to digest, and it makes it okay. So when they go on, and there's like, you know, Umbrella Academy, or I think Invincible just got it saying, right? Invincible's Invincible. on uh, oh, Amazon okay. Prime now. And, uh, you know, Sandman's coming out this year. Sandman's coming out. All these things that were like for like these weirdos. Ultra and, nerds. For ultra Sandman. nerds. Like, yeah. I'm a literary nerd and I like comics. This one, an Eisner or whatever the fuck it yeah. won. I forget. I remember. Yeah, I'll Snail Gaiman. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even American Gods got made into like a series, which just got canceled, yeah. but he's promising that he's going to finish it. So all these things have been like cool and more mainstream now because of Netflix and because of the Marvel boom and all that. So it's translating into horror and like sci-fi and all that to where it's like every merchandising is just insane now. Yeah. I mean, everything has a fucking toy. If it's worth a shit, yeah. it's going to have a toy. If it I makes think money. it's good, though. I think that because the people like us will – or yeah. the people who listen to this podcast or people like us, they'll go in and go, yeah. I'm going to buy this and in five years it's not going to be cool. It doesn't yeah. matter. And then it, I'll find it. I'll find another one somewhere on you know, like a second market, like you yeah. were just talking about. Who doesn't? They don't give a shit. Or you can just get rid of it. Well, and I make some money. For, yeah, I bought this for Betty, and she's not. She's not really into into Freddie anymore. I'm oh like, man, <laughs> I cannot wait 
just set my ass on a throne on top of that Funko Pop landfill and light a joint. <laughs> I don't know, man. It doesn't seem to be stopping. It doesn't uh, seem to be going anywhere. I think, uh, I think, I think, I think it will implode. <laughs> It'll implode one day. But well, I thought, yeah, Beanie Babies. I think Derek is the first person who ever told me he equated that to Beanie Babies. This was like years ago. Yeah. Years ago. It, it's and it's I, I, I laugh for five minutes and go, you're not wrong. Yeah. Sorry, it, Funko people. It has outlasted. Yeah, you like Funko, don't you, though? But it's going to crash. I do have a few. No, tell us to go fuck ourselves. No, no, no. I've got, I've got a few, but those are the only things yeah. I take out of the box. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're, yeah, you take them out of the box so you can fucking kick them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can put them on the shelf. So they they yeah. fit better when they're not in that big bulky and, box. And I, I talk tons of shit about it. And one of the main reasons why I do talk shit goes back to the beginning of this podcast is I know a lot of Funko collectors that aren't toy collectors, and it drives me fucking bananas to go like, for years, like my highly articulated like beautiful figures that i collect are dog shit but then you saw that they made like an office fucking shitty like steve carell figure and you're like oh i'm a toy collector yeah. now and it's smushed down the size of this uh, mug in yeah front of me. and i'm like just fuck you but i get it too i hope it's a gateway drug to a lot of people to where they do become like collectors it's like the barbies it's like here's a horror barbie here's a horror funko for your little small child haven't they done horror barbies kind of i'm trying to be positive derek <laughs> <laughs> Living Dead dolls, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They did do those. There's like, yeah, there's so many things that we haven't even been able to even mention because there's so much to talk about in this last decade, and now we're in a whole another decade. And it's like it's just gonna get more and more crazy, I think. Yeah, and this podcast is more for us, just a fanboy about this thing that we love and talk about toys and this shit. Toys are gonna come up. It's probably every other fucking podcast because every time we talk about something, we're like, actually, I have that action figure of that. Remember? Yeah. And that, even more so now, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, that Exterminator 2 action figure? Oh, well, yeah. It's coming. Like collecting in general. I mean, you're, you're sitting in front of a little thing of masks. I've got walls of VHS. I, you know, you have retro, uh, uh, retro go go mummy next to you. Like, How is there collecting... not from Dust Till Dawn figures? That's the thing. Is I you always... tell me to look at that. And you distracted me because I look at that. And I well, saw it's it. true. All these little things. That's what I'm talking about. Why don't we? Probably. Why don't we get these companies? I mean, it's yeah. so much easier to contact them now. It's like this is what we want. So that's what happened with the reanimators. Like yeah. this is what we want. Probably something. And they finally gave it to us. Yeah. Um, it's just like any kind of government system. It's like you have to tell the people, tell the bastards what we want. Yeah. And we. And what, what is it? it? The titty twister place. Yeah, place it. that'd be awesome. The only way we'll you could it. get that was the Japanese laser disc or the uh, Blu-ray that came with a titty twister. I just, did it really? Uh, yeah. Holy oh, shit! And it's like a little miniature version of it. Oh man, it's I not very articulated, but it's like a box. It's like I would buy that in a heartbeat if they did that. Look it up. Yeah. And you like the figure line for that, like the Gecko Brothers, and you get Danny Trejo, and you got fucking Fred Williamson. There's like so this many shit. different kind of vampires in that movie. Yeah. You're gonna get the Fred Williamson like before or yeah. after. Maybe he's like the Max Effects, where he can change him into the vampire. I think the the the, the yeah. licensing. Let's do this, guys. I, I just don't let's, understand. Let's, let's Score Club Indiegogo. Go. I can't imagine Robert Rodriguez <laughs> saying no to because I feel like more so Robert Rodriguez would be the issue there because Tarantino, we have Kill Bill figures, we have Pulp Fiction, we yeah, have right. all made by different companies. We yeah. have Reservoir Dogs. And since I guess if you want to go back to like oh shit, we got Django days. Unchained. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's made Hateful Eight. He's got figures for everything. The Hateful Eight ones are badass, yeah. man. I mean, he's had toys for everything, but so from Dust Till Dawn, the most toyetic franchise probably for both of them. Yeah. Nothing. I can't imagine Juliet Lewis can be like no, and George Clooney's always seemed like a badass. So it's not like he can be like no. I think all these people together. I don't. Maybe think there's give just a not fuck. enough people being like I need a fucking yeah. Gecko Brothers box set. Well, yeah, and I was gonna go back to that too when you said that. I do think there's gonna be a, a problem with oversaturation because I think what's happening a lot of times is these toys are coming out, and dorks like me are day one guys. Like we're at fucking Targets and WalMarts every other day. Because really, frankly, I had nothing else to do with my life, <laughs> so I go in just to check what they have all the time. And I'll, but they, you won't see them on picks forever. But then all of a sudden, they rot. Masters of the Universe is right now. Like you couldn't find He Man and Skeletor for months. Now you can't walk in a Walmart without seeing seven pegs covered in them. And I think what's happening is they're selling fast at first, and then these places are over ordering them. Now they're gonna become peg warmers, and then it's gonna get discontinued because that's you a great order. term. Yeah. Egg warmers. Yeah, and it, it sucks though because that's it's what the happens. rancor keeper. It's just it's just gonna sit there. It's just gonna fucking sit there. I mean, I go those. Re they did the real Ghostbusters again. Going back to you saying like, hey, they're making the same toy again. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're making the real Ghostbusters toys 
They're exactly the same. Yeah. There's no difference. And it's funny because that was the thing in the 80s. You, that's helped with the uh, toys coming out, like the little monsters getting yeah. those. You know, yeah. get the Sam Hain yeah. monster. That was yeah. it. You, that's what you get. And now we are 2021, and we're getting a whole other line of Ghostbusters toys. Yeah. And they're rotting on the pegs. Fuck. They're so, they, at first, they sold out, and now if you walk into a Walmart toy section, it's nothing but empty pegs besides Skeletor and He-Man taking up everything. And then you'll see the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, and that's it's very it. much like Star Tra- Star Wars and Star Trek. Yeah. Like the nerds get the things, and then yeah. the rest of the populace doesn't give a shit about these toys. Yeah, they don't. Because who who's the market for those yeah. besides us? So you're going. That's the weird thing about keeping those in the regular toy section and making hundreds of thousands of these. Because these companies will come back and say, "Well, we didn't make any money off of them." And like, well, yeah, you did the first few months because yeah. does that your, kill the line? Your demographic came in and bought them, yeah. but then you fucking decided to, to make a whole nother batch yeah. instead of just going like, okay, that's enough of that. It, so you, it, does that kill it then? It does a lot of times. And then maybe a resurgence in the small mini market, the indies, all that kind so, of stuff. Everything comes in waves. So I learned this by listening to one of these wrestling figure podcasts. By the way, uh, Walmart's thing is so you're competing with other companies to have a peg, right? You're fighting for a peg. And the big name ones like Hasbro and shit won't give up their pegs usually. You're fighting for that shit. So like a company like AEW, which is it's a wrestling company, but they're not WWE. But they finally got figures, right? They had to fight to get pegs in Walmart. This is crazy. It's like the theater company. Yeah. And they had to, to get the pegs in Walmart. They promised Walmart they would be exclusive to Walmart for their first right. set that comes out. Walmart gives them two pegs. And then you get this thing for your ring. People bitch that they couldn't find them in Walmart. So the guy that, Jeremy Padauer, who's the guy that's making these figures or runs it, who actually goes back to the Jack days with WWF, he's been in the toy game for a long time, explained it saying you have to short your first two shipments because you want to make sure they sell out. Because if you ship something and it sets on the pegs, they won't order again from you and you'll lose the peg. Oh, wow, and that's it, crazy. And it'll just kill your company. It's a gamble. Because if Walmart does that, you're dead. You know, and you already got to fight for it. You got to fucking fight to have one or two pegs when you're competing against Jack Wares, who makes like that's who makes the AEW ones. Their only other big thing is they make Fortnite figures, and none of these kids buy those anyway. Yeah. So, like, or Jazz Wares. Sorry, I call him Jack Wares. Like, Jax is who he worked for. (laughs) Fucking brain. (laughs) But it's crazy to think of how the toy business works. So, going like each peg you see there, these companies are demanding that peg and they're fighting for it. And that first shipment you put out, it makes sense. You don't want to overship it to where, oh, no, we didn't sell out. They're sitting here. Now Walmart's is put, Walmart puts clearance stickers on yeah. our shit. They won't order. They're just like, we're done. It didn't sell. Your product didn't sell. You're fucked. And unfortunately, Walmart is like one of the biggest, the biggest chain in America. So if you get booted out of there, you're pretty much stuck online because if People conventions. People, other retailers that Comic want your book stores, yeah. other retailers want your shit because your shit's in Walmart. Right. They're gonna go, oh shit. Well, we can't let them fucking have it all. If Walmart has it, we'll sure as fuck put it up. And that's why Target has AEW now, and because it has done well, thankfully. And you can't find it anywhere, yeah. and you do have to fight for it for scalpers and other people. And it's good. Sometimes that's a positive, but then you got the world of real Ghostbusters. And Masters in the Universe, which they get a little leeway because they're made by Hasbro. So you get the it's a bigger company, yeah. Yeah, Hasbro's always got some pull, but it does hurt to see those setting there like that, knowing that we're going to have to bring back that KB 3 for 10 bin at yeah. Walmart or some shit. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that dreadful bin I, where you go to die. I don't know. Do we want to end it on this? This is a really sad well, note for something that's beautiful. Let's end it on this. What is your favorite? Figure, oh god, dude. or favorite thing, fa- favorite collection. Man, ask Derek first. Uh, he's always on it. I, I'll, Fuck, I, I'll go first. My favorite is all my Evil Dead stuff. Yeah. I have yeah. walls and walls full of like action figures. Oh, I know you do. Yeah, the ashy slashy puppets. <laughs> that was great. That was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you know, the reproduction. I love those. <clears throat> I, you know, I just anything Evil Dead, I seem to buy. Yeah. If Bruce Campbell ever came to my house, he'd probably be creeped out. He would be. Just well, you, a little bit. He, he helped you out one time, so it'll be all right. He did. He did. But, Halloween you know, I've night. got I've got my lunch boxes. I've got my books. I don't know. Like, As I've gotten older, I've got, I, I collect yeah. action figures less and less. It takes something yeah, really you, special yeah. for me. Yeah, thanks, man. It does. It takes something special for me to be like, I'm getting it. Like I just said, I, I got yeah. the Chet uh, uh, retro, uh, whatever it's called, the uh, Super Fuck. Seven, yeah. Yeah, the retro figure. Yeah, I got you. Know, it took something I've never. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So I don't have one. I mean, if anything, I would say Godzilla action figures are the only ones I would still buy. 
And, yeah. and I know Derek's like, there's a million of them. But it's the same. There's a it's million the, of it's them. The it's the same, same thing, though. Different Each page one is over. a variation or a, one from a specific movie. Yeah. And they're really nailing the sculpts. They're nailing the paint jobs. Some of them they do, yes. Yeah. They really do. But and, and, and it's not as simple as, say, like they're just repackaged in the same Godzilla. Because yeah. it's not. This one's got ears. Yeah, it's, it's, not like, it's not quite like Gremlins. So. Right. Um, but I guess I'd go with that. It's, that's, it's so hard. Because I I've, yeah. I've kind of branched I, my collecting is insane more like vinyl and 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 you know books about film it's not necessarily okay. toys anymore yeah well Derek Ugh. it's it's hard for me because I collect so I, much I collect yeah I mean I, I still buy I mean if you know me at all I probably still buy three to five figures a week sometimes more uh, I collect wrestling horror Star Wars Marvel DC. Uh, we didn't even talk about McFarlane getting a DC license, by the way, and that's been a fucking blast because he's been doing metal and death metal, uh, all these like really weird Batman alternate universe stories, where like Batman's all like gothic out and shit, and, like wearing death metal style stuff, or yeah. like there's like zombie versions of characters and like evil versions of. I characters. loved the Marvel Zombies to- uh, toys too, man. Goddamn, the, the Marvel awesome. Zombies toys were so. Fucking Remember the Resident cool. Evil when they first came out? That was the first zombie yeah. toy I'd ever had in my life. I was like, yeah. "What the fuck is the guy with the gun?" Yeah, and it looked very much like Flyboy from Dawn of the Dead. Go ahead. And I have a Flyboy from Dawn of the Dead. Mezco did that. We Those were fucking about, great. We didn't even talk about Mezco's boxes. Of they're their, so their many, eighty dollar figures that are there's so actually beautiful. There's Japanese companies we haven't yeah. brought up. There's, yeah. there's so, oh, there's a ton. We forgot about the Dawn of the Dead. The figures from like the early nineties. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, there's so many. And, there's a ton, and we yeah because we, we yeah. forget about them. We did research, and yeah. besides just our normal nerd knowledge, it's fucking hard, man. And what's crazy? What's crazy for me is all the figures I have, which I have thousands at this point. It's it's a problem. It's beautiful. And I also I have a Bruce Campbell shelf as well, and shrine. I shrine a shrine. Yes, sorry, it's, yeah. a, it's actually a Bruce oh, Campbell slash Campbell. Elvis shrine, which is really fucking funny. Uh, and it's it's great that he's like so toyetic, and he has all these different ashes. And now we get him like old ash now, which is really cool from the TV show. Yeah, looked great. Uh, but with all these toy collecting, and, and I do go back to those WWF Hasbro's. That's where my nostalgia lies: is those '90s Jacks figures and those Hasbro's. But my favorite fucking figure that I have, I just got it last year. It was a Comic Con exclusive last year, and it's the Macho Man Randy Savage Slim Jim yeah. fucking figure oh, wow. that came in the giant box of Slim Jims. And you pull it out, and he's in the case, and he's wearing the it Slim. Smells Jim. like he's it. wearing the Macho Man <laughs> Slim Jim gear, and he's holding Slim Jims in his hands. And it's one of the most perfect con exclusives I've ever seen in my life. And like. Just that packs all the nostalgia to me. It's that '90s WCW look and those Slim Jim commercials from back in the day. And the figure is done so fucking perfectly, dude. Yeah, it's just everything I would want in a figure, and it's got that exclusive chase feel to it because it was a Comic Con exclusive. It was hard to find. I got my fucking hands on it, and I love it. It's my favorite fucking toy in a world of like I got thousands, and I could talk about each thing separately and tell you a story about each fucking toy I have. And I think I we all it. could, man. And yeah. It's, but I love it. I love this collecting thing. As much as I talk shit about Funko, I'm glad that other people are getting into it. And like I said before, I do hope it becomes a gateway drug so you can enjoy it as much as I do and you can relive your childhood. Or if your childhood sucked, you can get some of those toys that you missed out on. And that's what I like about, you know, I know this elitist bullshit of like, well, I had it as a kid. That's my childhood. But what about those kids that got fucked? That their parents went and buy it, and now you get to see that toy. Now you fucking made it. Now you can go drop ten or twenty bucks and buy that motherfucker instead of two hundred, and go home and let that bitch right. breathe and put it on the shelf. That's fucking fun. Let man. that that's bitch what breathe. Shit, that's what this shit's all about, <laughs> man. So, yeah, I uh, love this shit. I think we should definitely end it on that. Then it's 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 great because the whole thing is that we we as horror nerds have been trying to get to this point where we are now, and there's a backlash yeah. to it. And I I don't know if I completely agree with it. That's why I put that question earlier. It's like, does it take away the value? Does it take away the nostalgia? Yeah. I don't think it takes away either one. Really, myself personally, yeah. Um, I, it just makes it grow because it makes me like. I actually want to go back and try to find that one action figure, yeah. the TMNT, that one that I had when I was a kid. I don't want to get the new the one. one. that got I away. might get the new NECA one, yeah. but I might. I want the original one, and I will fucking save up and get it. I'll stand those motherfuckers side by side. Right. I, I love it. I can't wait for conventions to start again so I can go and be like, holy shit, I didn't even know this was out. Yeah. And yeah. Gra- grab something. I never mind paying like another five or ten bucks to a, to a vendor support at a them. convention yep. to support them. So I mean that's where I would buy most of my most uh, of my I, shit. I do support the shout out vendor. Sometimes vendor is over overpriced because now you can just look at yeah. the phone and go, "Come on, brother. Yeah, come on, sister. Whatever." But that but, five or ten dollar markup to help somebody out—that's always that's cool. the I'm difference. That's what I was going to get towards. Yeah. They oh, they'll mark them up, and then if you if you know what you're doing, like as us conventioners, you know, like that guy has got to pay gas. He's got to yeah. pay fucking room. He's got to pay food. This is not none of this is free. Yeah. So I don't shit on those. Yeah. Now there we do have price gougers. They're like. 
triple the fucking price. I'm yeah. Like, Come on, man. This is not yeah, eBay. Yeah. People that go scoop them and resell them. But that, yeah. that's it. But there's people that get their stores and shit. And their prices are usually fair at conventions. And, I, and, you know, if you're new to this toy collecting thing or listen to this podcast, hit up hard conventions when they're back around because there are some good toy vendors. And it's better than dealing with eBay and you don't got to deal with shipping bullshit. And you can see the figure and you don't got to worry about the condition because if you're a mint on car collector, which I'm not, I say rip the bitch open. But if you are a mint on car collector, <laughs> not a can of the corpse song. you know, fucking you can at least look at the car to make sure it's in good shape. And they yeah. got, hey, they got your fucking Funko Pops. Be happy. Yeah. Dave, you want to take us out of here? I will. Uh, you can find us, or thank you for listening, and you can find thank us on you. Anchor FM, Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Apple Podcast, CastBox. Find us on YouTube. Find us on Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Find us in the NECA section at your local Target. Oh, spready. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. That like, didn't even work. This I is just, so old. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.